Hello everyone, that's Mohamed Yakub, and here is another video on the Steam 3204 Discovery Board tutorial series. And today's tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about this 4x4 keypad. And in fact, this tutorial was suggested by a friend here, um, Akirdis. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. So what I did is that I created a library for this keypad, so that you don't have to do the low-level coding yourself. You can just include the library H and C file and uh, start using it in your project uh, and before I start let me walk you through the library very quickly so here is the H and C file for it uh, in the H file we've got the uh, type diffs and static variables and the function prototypes and you can see that the library has got uh, only five functions uh, two of them are private and three are public so the three public functions are the keypad initialize so that you can tell the library which pins you're using for the keypad and you can use read keypad to read which switch is pressed from 0 to 15 and this is shown on this um, diagram so this is switch 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on uh, so this function will tell you which switch uh, is pressed and then you can use the last function get character to convert the switch number into uh, its corresponding character uh, and now let me talk to you about the wiring of the keypad uh, for the wiring as you can see on this uh, picture the output pins of the keypad are from left to right row 1, 2, 3, 4 and then column 1, 2, 3, 4 as shown in this diagram and what we have the rows we will use them as input to the STM board so they will be digital input to the STM the four column lines will be a digital output from the STM board uh, and one important thing you need to do is that we need to pull the row lines to uh, ground. So we need to pull down these four row lines with a resistor from 1K to 10K. Uh, I use 5.6K and that worked great. So feel free to use any resistor uh, in that range. Uh, and uh, a little bit about the working principle of the keypad. Uh, what we do is that we set uh, each column high one at a time and then scan the corresponding rows uh, so for example uh, if we set column 2 high and we found that row 3 is active that means number 8 was pressed alright so having talked about the wiring and uh, a little bit about the working principle I think we're ready now to start the Cubemix configuration so let's go to Cubemix and start setting up our project uh, and on Cubemix we first click on your project uh, and now we need to select our board so I'm going to use the board selector for that uh, it's the STM Discovery uh, of 4 board. Uh, it's this one, the of 4 Discovery. And this is the default pinout of the STM Discovery board. Uh, but I don't need all of those pins, so I'm going to reset the pinout and enable them myself. So clear pinout and click yes. So for the pinout of the keypad, uh, as I mentioned, we need 4 inputs, 4 digital inputs for the rows, and 4 digital outputs for the column lines. So let, let me enable uh, four digital inputs first. Uh, I'm going to start with D0 and set this to digital input. Uh, I'm going to enable four of them. Here we go. So we've got four input lines for the row and they're D0 to D3. And I'll enable four more pins for the column as output. So PD4 as TPI or output. Uh, and three more for the rest of the columns. So now we have four digital inputs for the four rows and four digital outputs for the four columns. Uh, and that's all for the pinout of the keypad. Um, we can literally generate our project. So click on this icon and select a location to store your files in. I'm going to store them in here and give the project a name. I'm going to call it keypad uh, video. And select your IDE. I'm using Keel Microvision 5 and hit OK. Uh, and once the source code is generated, click on Open Project and this will take you straight to your IDE. Uh, and on Kyle, we need to open the main, so expand this uh, folder and open the main. Uh, and the first thing we will do here is that we're going to add the library files to the project. And the first thing we need to do is that we need to copy the files I'm going to include down in the description to the uh, project file location. So here are the library files. I'm going to copy them to my project location. And I'm going to store them in the MDK ARM folder. So just copy them over. And here they are. They're copied to the uh, folder. And we also need to include them in the Kyle project. So right click on application user. 
and add existing files to the group and this took me straight to the MDK ARM folder so I'm gonna add the keypad uh, C file and keypad H file as well uh, and you can see them added to the project here on the left uh, next we need to include the header file of the library into our main so open the C file and copy the um, header and paste it in the main here and the user code begin includes and this would add the library to the main but one more thing left we need to do before we can use the library we would need to add the path of the MDK ARM folder where we stored those files in order for the compiler to see them so go to options for target uh, C++ and open here and add a new path and we need to add the MDK ARM folder path and click OK and now the error will be gone perfect and now having included the library file let me quickly compile the code and then we'll carry on so hit compile and wait for that to finish uh, this is just to see if there are any include related errors or if the code didn't compile correctly uh, if everything is okay we will carry on and start using the library function uh, and as you know the first thing we'll use in the library is the initialize function uh, initialize function takes keypad wire type diff uh, which is some sort of a structure that holds all the uh, pin ports and pin numbers that we would have to define in our main and pass it to this function we'll have a look at it in a bit let's just wait for the compilation to finish all right code compiled successfully without any errors now let's uh, carry on um, so as I said first we need to use the initialize function uh, to tell the library which pins we are using so I'm going to copy it to my main uh, and I'll call it in big and number two uh, after we do after we did all the initialization this is a perfect place to call this function uh, and the parameter of this function is a keypad uh, wire type diff which we'd have to define in our main so just like defining any uh, variable so I'll define it here on big and number one and I'll call it my uh, keypad uh, struct and this will hold all the ports and pin numbers so I need to call it before here um, so my keypad struct dot uh, n0 port is on let's get back to cubemix uh, so I defined all the uh, inputs and output on uh, port D and pin number 0 to 3 are my inputs and 4 to 5 are my outputs uh, which go to the columns so for the input port is GPIO port D um, and similarly for in uh, 1, 2 and 3 uh, so all the inputs are on port D and similarly for the outputs so uh, so let me out 0 port is port D as well we define all of them in port D and similarly for the other output ports uh, so out 1, 2, 3 ports are on port D as well and now let me set the bins and now let me set the pin numbers uh, so keypad structure dot in zero pin this is this was on uh, pin zero port D uh, so just one more time on cubemix so uh, the inputs are d0 to d3 and the output which are that which correspond to the columns are four to seven so we're just going to do that really quick so in zero is pin zero in in one is pin one Uh, and similarly for the other pins uh, and these are the uh, rows pins and l now let me do the columns here we go I finished with the ports and pins now I just need to pass this uh, structure to the function to the initialize function and this will tell the library that we are using uh, these ports and pins for our keypad wiring uh, and we need to pass it as a pointer and this will initialize the keypad and store those pin numbers as the uh, keypad wiring uh, and by doing this we are ready to use the library uh, we can go straight and use a uh, read keypad function uh, which takes a, a pointer to an array of 16 elements that correspond to the 16 switches on the keypad so I'll copy it to my main I'll do it in the infinite while loop here uh, and for the uh, input parameter of this should be an array of boolean uh, for the switches status uh, and to use boolean I need to use the standard boolean library which I need to include in here uh, let's just include std boolean dot uh, h std bool dot h this will include the boolean uh, variables um, to my main 
So I'll define the array, uh, boolean, um, I'll call it my switches, and it's uh, of size 16. And I just need to pass it to the function of the uh, of the read keypad function. And that's it. Now I should be able to read the keypad. Uh, and I'll put a little delay of uh, uh, of 100 milliseconds perhaps. Uh, and now we're ready to go. So let me compile the code. Uh, and we'll load it to the board and we'll have a look at the debugging mode to read the status of this uh, of the my switches variable while we're pressing the keypad. But first make sure you connect your keypad correctly. Uh, do all the uh, pull down resistors I uh, shown you here and connect these to these are the row 1 to 4 and column 1 to 4 as I explained in QMX wiring here. The rows are the inputs and the columns are the output of the STM board. And if you did this now we're ready to go to uh, debugging mode. Here we go, we're in debugging mode now. Uh, I need to include my switches variable to the watch memory first and then run the code. So add to watch one. There we go, it's added. Uh, and let me, let me expand it up so that I can see all the uh, 16 switches status. Uh, might need to expand it all the way up. Okay, here we go. So let me now run the code. Okay, we've got zero status, so none of the button is pressed. So let me press number one. Perfect, this one came on, and now two on the keypad, uh, three, uh, and the fourth button, which is uh, the letter A, and the second row, uh, randomly. Okay, perfect, and I can also uh, press multiple buttons at the same time, so let me press one and two, and they came on, um, and so on. Alright, superb, so my keypad is working. Uh, and one more thing I want to do for this video is that I want to link this to my uh, LCD, my 16x2 LCD that I talked about at this video. Um, so I want to link it to this project and I, and I want to display the press button on the uh, LCD. Uh, because I think this will be useful for people who are trying to link the keypad to the LCD. So what I'd need to do to enable that is that I'd need to get back to my Cubemix and enable pins for the LCD. And if you would recall from the LCD 16x2 video, uh, I can use the 4 bits mode. So I just need to enable 4 data lines and I'm going to use BP4 to BB7. So let me enable them and set them to TPIO output. Uh, and 2 more digital lines for the RS, register select and for the enable line. And this, this should be enough to use my 16x2 uh, LCD. Um, so let me close the open keel project and regenerate the project again uh, from Cubemix. So click on generate source code again and this will enable lines for the LCD. And wait for this to finish. Okay, code generation is done so click on open project to get back to the KL project. Okay, so we have our newly generated project. Let me uh, scroll down and double check that the lines for the LCD are enabled. Um, and sure enough, as you can see on the GPIO in it, uh, PB4 to 7 and E0 and 1 are enabled for the LCD. Now what I need to do is that I need to copy the library, the LCD 16x2 library files to my current project. I explained how to do that in my LCD video, so watch that if you haven't watched it yet. So I'm going to copy them to my project, uh, and here's my project folder, and I'll put them in the MDK ARM folder, just like what I did with the keypad library. Uh, and then I would need to include them in my project, add existing files, uh, and it's the lcd 16 by 2c and .h file. Um, and because the path for the MDK ARM is already added in the uh, uh, options for target, I just need to include the library into my main and start using it. So copy the header file to my main, uh, put it in here, and now I can start using the, li the LCD library. Uh, and now I can start using the LCD library. Uh, and what I need to do first is that I need to initialize the LCD on 4-bit uh, mode. So I need to call the begin 4-bit mode function. And I need to call it somewhere in here. So I'm going to call it here. And pass the uh, ports and pins for uh, RS and enable. Uh, and I set RS and enable on port E, as you saw in Cubemix. And there are pin 0 and 1. Pin 0 for RS. And pin 1 on port E for the uh, enable line. And then for the uh, data line, I set them on uh, port B from 4 to 7. Uh, so, th so the 4 bits uh, port is uh, port B. 
um, and the lines are uh, 4 to 7. So that's all I need to uh, initialize and begin the LCD in 4 bits mode. Now I can start using it and print uh, characters to the uh, LCD. Uh, so on the first line of the LCD, I'm going to print a um, little header saying pressed key. Uh, and then on the second line, I'll uh, print the pressed uh, button. I'll print the character of the pressed button. So after reading the keypad, um, I'll check which switch is active by doing this for loop, looping through the entire 16 switches and see which one is equal to high. So if my switch uh, is equal to true, but I don't have to put it because it's a boolean variable anyway, then I'll print to the LCD the um, character that corresponds to the um, um, active switch. And I can use a function in the keypad library called get character. So what you need to pass is just pass the index of the pressed switch and I will return you a character, um, an ASCII character of that switch. And for our keypad, we know that if we press uh, the fourth switch, it's character A and the library is going to return this to us. And if you look at the definition of the function, uh, you can see that it's going to return you a um, character uh, corresponding to the key uh, pressed. Okay, so let's use that into our uh, main. Let me copy the function. And I want to print the character of that specific index, uh, of i index, uh, because i here corresponds to the pressed switch if this uh, statement is correct. And that will be it. Um, and I'll also clear my LCD at the end of the loop and start all over again when I get back at the top. Alright, so if you connected your LCD to the STM board, now we should be ready to test. So let's compile the code, load it to the board, and now every pressed button will appear as a character on the LCD. Alright, perfect. You just saw the uh, keypad working with the LCD. Uh, and this indeed brings me to the end of my tutorial today. That's all I want to show you. Uh, thanks for watching and as always, if you found this helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks and I'll see you next time. Take care.